An Indian wedding is a bit like test cricket. It just can't be done in a single day. Various events are held in the run-up to the actual wedding, and two of these are the Sangeet and the Mehndi ceremonies. The Sangeet is really a gathering that gives the wedding guests and the prospective in-laws an opportunity to get to know each other in an informal situation, while the Mehndi ceremony is all about beauty and elegance and preparing the bride for her nuptials. Food is an essential element of both occasions, and this week Yudhika presents her take on some traditional dishes with a pre-wedding theme. Mehndi and Sangeet parties are joyous occasions to celebrate with family and friends. There's song, dance, delicious snacks and Indian desserts too. I'm preparing North Indian chicken samosas, pao bhaji, gajar halwa and a chocolate mousse. I'm starting out with a chocolate mousse and for that start out with some cold water going into the pan and then sugar. Now dissolve the sugar in the cold water and bring this up to the boil. This is a really simple chocolate mousse and the best part is it's eggless. Just check the syrup. The syrup now looks ready. It is slightly sticky and now in goes the chocolate. Switch off the heat and stir the chocolate into the hot sugar syrup. Keep working this together until it's silky. I'm flavoring this with some vanilla paste. You can also use a bit of cardamom or even a bit of chili. That looks absolutely decadent. Now leave this to cool until it's at room temperature. Let's start with the gajar halwa. And for that we need a pan. Preheat the pan. And the first ingredient going in is some butter. The butter's melted, now in goes a cinnamon stick. Just a little one. Now add 500 grams grated carrot. And saute the carrots for about two to three minutes. Stir the grated carrot and make sure it's lightly coated in the batter. This also gets rid of that excess moisture in the carrot. Now pour in 500 ml of full cream milk. The carrots need to simmer in the hot milk until the moisture evaporates. Just keep stirring that through, scraping the bottom of the pan as well. The moisture is now evaporated. The carrots are quite dry in the pan and they look thick and creamy. That's ready. Now more butter going in. Stir fry the carrot in the butter. And now for the sugar. And ground cardamom. And work those ingredients into the gajar halwa. Garnish the gajar halwa just before serving. Let's get on with the chocolate mousse. Chocolates cool down. Pour the chocolates into a cup of whipped cream. Now gently work the cream into the chocolate. This is perfect for vegetarians who omit egg from their diet. Now, scoop the mixture into a jug. Now pour the chocolate mousse into the shot glasses. Just a little extra going in to make sure they're all even. Once that's done, Tap the glasses down just to help the mousse settle. Now leave these in the refrigerator to chill for about two to three hours or until they set. The mousse is in the refrigerator, the desserts are done and now we're on to the savouries. I'm going to start with the North Indian chicken samosas and for that, the pastry, I've got a cup of flour and season that with some salt, sprinkle that in. Next, ajwain or carom seeds going in. 
This is also called lavage in English. Now some butter. This is really soft butter. Just use your fingertips to get it out the bowl. And sunflower oil, a tablespoon. Now use a chef's best tool, your fingertips, to work these ingredients together. And now some water going in. Half a cup into a cup of flour. Gently work the ingredients together. If the dough is too sticky, add a little extra flour and work the ingredients together. Knead that into a soft dough. The dough is now ready. It's very similar to making puri. And now just knead that. And I'm rolling this into a length. Use a knife to slice through. And I'm dividing this into 10 portions. Now roll each piece out into a length. And just coil them up in opposite directions. And turn one side on top of the other. And that's the last one. Now to roll them out. Put a flour going onto the work surface. And press these down. And just roll them into circles. If you are a bit slow at rolling, cover the dough with a damp cloth to prevent it from drying out. I've already cooked up the filling. I've sauteed some chicken mince with some onion, garlic, cumin, coriander and garam masala and a pinch of turmeric and then lots of fresh coriander. Slice the pastry in half, fold that over and moisten the edge with water. And fold that over again. And this will give you a little cone. Pop some of the filling into the cone. Moisten the edge with water again and fold over. And dip the base of the samosa into some flour and leave that aside. And now for the next one. Like with any samosa, these take a bit of practice. I've already preheated some oil and we're going to deep fry these and place them into hot oil. Stir them around. They're starting to turn Pale golden in colour. I think the first one's ready. Last amuse is coming out the hot oil. Now leave them to drain on a wire rack and then use absorbent paper towel to dab off the excess oil. And now for the power bhaji, I'm starting out with some sunflower oil in a frying pan. and add some ginger julienne and green chilli. Fry the ginger until light golden and now add the tomato. Turn up the heat and saute that for about a minute. Season with salt. So about a teaspoon of coarse salt going in. Pau Bhaji is a Bombay specialty and one of my late night favourites when I'm in the city. And it's a simple dish of smashed potatoes, boiled vegetables and it's cooked in a tomato sauce. Now chilli flakes going in. I'd say about two teaspoons. Now some ginger and garlic paste going in. About two teaspoons. And a splash of water. Mix the ingredients together. It should form a thick sauce. Now for the boiled veggies, I've got potatoes, peas and carrots. Mix that into the cooked tomato and use a wooden spoon to just break that down. Next, it goes some soft butter. When I say some, I mean a fair bit. Now 
add two teaspoons of garam masala going into the bhaji. Saute that for a minute. Now for some fresh coriander, just roughly chopped. And then a squeeze of lime. This adds a lovely citrusy zing to this. And now that's the bhaji done. In Bombay, there's a special type of bread roll that's called pow that's served with this bhaji. I'm using cocktail rolls for this, and I've toasted them lightly with butter. Now scoop the bhaji onto the toasted bread roll. Now to finish up, some chopped red onion, a light sprinkling going over. And now a squeeze of lime, also going over the onion. And this is my mendi and sangeet menu. I've made pao bhaji. I've cheated slightly. I haven't made the Bombay pao bread. I've used cocktail bread rolls instead. And I've toasted them lightly with a drop of butter. And I've spooned the bhaji over, garnished with red onions and a drop of lime to go with that North Indian chicken samosas, a silky chocolate mousse and gajar halwa. I've decorated the halwa with gold leaf, toasted pistachios, almonds, and crumbled barfi for added decadence. I hope you enjoy it.